Hey, in this video training, we're going to talk about why willpower is an indirect game. We're going to unveil what I call the counterintuitive dynamics that lie behind or govern self-control, how it really works. I'm Brian Ogilvie, and I'm the author of this book, How to Conquer Yourself, Discipline and Willpower for the Conscious Creative Thinker. Towards the intro of the book, first chapter, I say something interesting. It goes, willpower is an indirect game. Conquering yourself is best handled by methods that are indirect and counterintuitive. Never obvious or straightforward. Specifically, willpower is an indirect game because willpower, for the most part, is determined by factors that we're typically unaware of. We have to use an indirect process to attain willpower because it's governed by dynamics we don't intuitively understand. So what does all this mean? What I mean is that willpower is not a direct game because human behavior as a whole is not the direct process of rational decision making or conscious quote unquote will to the contrary almost everything we do is about instinctual drives or subliminal motivations there's this concept called the triune brain theory i might talk about later to explain more so cultivating willpower therefore requires you to leverage these more unconscious dynamics in your favor you have to keep them in mind when you're trying to force yourself to do specific things so specifically some examples if you want to discipline yourself to like, you know, start a website, publish a comic book, make an album or anything, do what I call broadcasting your commitments. Make a public specific date for the launch and publicize that. Make it public because we human beings, we're social creatures. So if we we basically protect our social image better than a comic book superhero protects his secret identity. We'll do anything to save ourselves from humiliation and embarrassment, etc. So if we have a public date, we'll stick to it just to save face. I also have something in the first chapter called concealing your diet. Basically put unhealthy foods in hard to access, nearly invisible places because studies show when we're hungry, we unconsciously reach for the most accessible item. So keep chips and cookies like high up in the cabinet behind other objects and then keep the apples and nuts or whatever out on the open. In chapter two, another example, I talk about how overcoming procrastination is really an issue of dissolving fear. We procrastinate on large scale tasks. We don't move forward in life because of deeper psychological concerns. So you kind of got to explore what your fears are and how you really think about the things you're procrastinating on before you can deal with the procrastination itself. Moving on, in chapter five, I talk about pro being productive and how getting more results is really an issue about concentration. Right. You you'll get more done if you learn to eliminate interruption and eliminate multitasking, specifically when it comes to technology. Moving on, if you want to be more creative, start by developing structure. Artists tend to resent structure because they feel like it's mechanical or it's routine. But the reality is the more structured you are, the less decisions you have to make, the more mental energy you free up for your creativity and your artistry. It's, it's counterintuitive. And lastly, stop setting goals if you'd rather solve problems. I'll, I'll do a video more in depth about this next week. But for many people, the idea of goal setting is counter to their personality. So if you say to those people, you know, let's set some goals, they'll go, uh, you know, all right, fine. But if you say to those same people like, yo, I got a problem. Can you help me solve it? Then they get excited. Then they get really into it and they start generating ideas. So stop setting goals if you'd rather solve problems. Again, the final idea, the concluding idea, willpower is an indirect game. It's like an inverse equation. So learning to cultivate willpower is a lot like learning to drive a car in reverse. Uh, because of that, my book really isn't tips and tricks. If you want that, you kind of got to go somewhere else. It's really a system of thought because you need to trigger yourself along a counterintuitive, different way of thinking. Like the answer the book contains is fundamentally abstract. So I don't want you to get the book thinking it's going to hold your hand through these like techniques and these silly little cookie cutter ideas because then you're going to be disappointed like it really requires you to think all right remember self-help programs as a whole are a lot like diet programs they're focused on the wrong side of the spectrum like if you want to get your diet together your health together it really has to accompany a change in your identity like it has to represent you going from one phase of life to another and willpower is the same way so similarly how to conquer yourself is a philosophy because conquering yourself requires a counterintuitive mind frame towards achievement, motivation, creative expression, and self-control. Again, willpower is an indirect game. It's governed by factors we're typically unaware of. We have to use an indirect process because it's based on dynamics we don't intuitively understand. So I'm hoping this makes sense. Like, if it doesn't, just let me know. Hit me up. Uh, the idea is to make it as apparent as possible because, you know, once you're willing to make the change, my goal is to show you how the science works. Like, 
I can't make you want it. I used to waste a lot of time trying to teach people that they should want it because it's such a great thing. But once you have the desire locked down, once you hit that point in yourself, that's really when the journey starts. And then that's when a lot of these things become apparent to you and become important to you. All right. That's when the quote unquote RPG character leaves the village. Like you have to leave the comfort and familiarity of your hometown. Your hometown has a metaphor for the redundancy of ineffective habits and counterproductive patterns of behavior. That's when the journey really starts. So, again, hope this helps. All right. Take care and have a great day.